Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another mesmerising edition of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show where we tend to bang on more about Ninja Turtles action figures than we do about actual, you know, tech. This week we'll be having a good hard squint at the Realme phone with 150 watt ultra dot charging. I'll be banging on about nothing at all as Cole Peer spaffs out a new blower or not. And special celebrity guest star Robert Downey Jr. may well be dropping by Techspert Towers to discuss some of his favourite real life gadgets, not fake ones like what he pretends to kill people with in them Iron Bloke movies. <coughs> so lots to get through, let's go! Techspert Weekly! So overall, as far as tech launches go, this week was almost about as interesting as a documentary about wallpaper paste, co-presented by John Major and the rotten corpse of a roadkill badger. Thankfully, however, it wasn't completely without incident as Realme finally unveiled the fresh GT Neo 3 with its insanely quick 150 watt ultra dot charge battery tech. So this thing goes from fully drained to ready for more action in less time than a porn star munching on a blue pill baguette. The 6.7 inch Superstar packs some serious tech including an HDR10 plus AMOLED screen, you got that same 50 meg IMX 766 primary camera as the Realme GT2 Pro, and a 4500mAh battery with that crazy fast charging shenanigans, which gives you a 50% charge in just 5 ruddy minutes. I mean that's really bloody impressive, I can't do anything in 5 minutes, apart from perhaps deeply disappoint a few thousand people who accidentally click on one of my videos expect an expert tech analysis. And apparently the Realme GT Neo 3 will be coming to Europe soon, so uh, yeah, how soon? Not really sure, sorry. Next up, nothing gaffer Cole Peer took to a virtual stage to rather appropriately launch nothing at all. He did tease that they were working on a smartphone nicknamed the phone open brackets one close brackets, a piece of news that wouldn't even surprise a hermit living inside of a pit, deep inside of a cave, right in the middle of a massive f***ing rainforest, even if he'd spent several months with his fingers lodged in his ears going la 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 The phone open brackets one close brackets, or the f*** all phone as I'm going to call it as that's basically what we know so far, should actually be launching sometime in summer apparently. We didn't get so much as a teasing glimpse of a phone, not even like a vague silhouette or anything, what we got was this, whatever the f*** that is. I mean, if you drink enough whiskey and squint at it really, really hard, then after a while it kind of looks like Totoro stood in the gloom with a massive droopy schlong. So I for one am already massively looking forward to this phone. So anyway, no new products to speak of, but Cole did at least give us a glimpse of the Nothing OS launcher that will be running on the f*** all phone. This appears to be a little more than a skin right now, changing up the fonts, the papers and other visual elements while keeping a stock Android vibe, which to be fair could be a welcome break from other heavier launchers. And apparently Nothing OS will be made available for a small number of smartphones in April, so we'll be able to get all touchy-feely with it very shortly. Cole also spent some time banging on about how he wanted to take on Apple with his very own seamless product ecosystem. The only problem there, Cole, being that you actually need to release some products, mate. Anyway, we'll have more Nothing news for you when it slowly trickles in like the desperate urine flow of a geriatric camel. And also this week, Honor launched its new super budget smartphone, the Honor X8, not to be confused with the Honor 8X, outside of its home country of China. This impressively slender 6.7 incher runs off the Snapdragon 680 SoC and boasts a 64 megapixel primary camera, a Full HD Plus display that mostly fills that front end, plus a selection of three jazzy colours. They've also packed in a 4000 milliamp battery, a headphone jack and of course that lovely Magic UI 4 launcher that really is the bee's tits. Don't start ripping off your iPhones in unbridled happiness and joy just yet though because apparently the Honor X8 will only be launched for now in the UAE and Saudi Arabia. A fact that I only just picked up on a moment ago when I actually bothered to read to the end of the press release. Professionalism, that's our word of the day kiddies, along with f sticks. Anyway, bollocks to it, that's, that's enough of that for, for another week. So now it's time for the part of the show that will probably make that wallpaper paste documentary look like BAFTA award winning television. It's viewer comments! Viewer comments! So this week we are kicking off with uh, GQ who says, Chris, been watching you since 16,000 subs. Uh, you absolute mentalist. You definitely deserve some kind of medal 
for that kind of uh, longevity. Preferably a massive medal that's completely hollow and filled with the finest whiskey, because uh, yeah, that's that's some punishment right there. Uh, next up, Luke says, you always manage to put the phones I'm looking for in a video just when I'm due an upgrade. And on a similar ilk, Audrey says, uh, you always have the phone I'm looking for when I need an upgrade. It's basically just because I try and cover all of the phones pretty much, so I'm, I'm bound to please a few people at least. Laws of f***ing averages and all that. Uh, your tech friend says, you're the best tech squirt. I think you might be looking for a, a different channel on that one. Uh, George says, is it me or does the show get better whenever you're hungover instead of fully alert? Yeah, definitely. The groggier, the better. I like my audience to be only semi-conscious, that's for sure. The less you remember of the show, the more likely you are to accidentally watch another one. Uh, next up, Cathal says, more hungover than usual. I'm surprised you survived till the end. Uh, it's a nice 15 degrees here in Navan Island. Uh, reckon my hangover though. So yeah, this was the day after St. Patrick's Day, which is when the last episode aired. I wasn't in a good state, so Christ only knows what uh, what Ireland as a whole was like. And I mean, I'm assuming that the day after St. Patrick's Day is basically a write-off, yeah? No one's actually expected anyone to, like, go into work and do anything productive. I mean, frankly, if you even manage to stagger to the toilet in time to empty up your insides, then surely that's a bonus. I do need to get to Ireland, actually, for St. Patrick's Day sometime. That would be a great, uh, <laughs> great little visit. I'd imagine it's something like... Uh, the big market, Newcastle, around 2 a.m. on a Saturday night. Just just one word for it, carnage. It's the kind of time and place where a violent street knife fight is just a minor inconvenience that you have to step around. Uh, next up, David says, hopefully you're feeling better today, Chris. Treat yourself to a fish finger sandwich and a big glass of iron brew. Oh, that sounds absolutely lush, to be honest with you. If stomachs could pop a boner, then mine would be as hot as a stick of Brighton Rock right about now. And you can't beat the classics as well. Fish finger sandwich. Go on, I like a little, little dribble of uh, vinegar on mine. Maybe some pickled onions on the side. Uh, so last week, of course, we discussed that Samsung's fresh new Galaxy A53, new £400 affordable mid-range smartphone alternative to those mega expensive S series uh, morphos but the general consensus seems to be that the Galaxy A53 isn't quite as enticing as the uh, older A52s uh, so for example Florin writes the A53 is worse than the A52 uh, no headphone jack no snapdragon processor more expensive no charger in the box they cut more and more functionality and accessories every year. Yeah, certainly doesn't seem to be a massive evolution really. The year 52, the year 52S, great handsets from last year. You'll probably be able to get them at an even more bargain as price now that the year 53 is out. Gonna withhold judgment on the Exodus because I know they're generally not but as good as the Snapdragon alternatives, but you never know. We'll see if it can handle a good bit of the game and good bit of the Genshin and all of that shenanigans. I'll probably try and do a side-by-side -side at the very least with the A52S. But frankly, there are so many goddamn smartphones coming out. I'm expecting three new ones in just next week alone. I've still got at least two or three that I haven't even begun to cover. I haven't even taken them out of the friggin' box. It's just that time of year when everything goes mental. I've already cut back on sleep and family time and all that kind of stuff. All I've got left is drinking, and frankly, that ain't going anywhere. Uh, where was I at? Harry says, I'm really stuck on deciding to either buy the Galaxy A53 5G or wait until the Pixel 6a comes out. What should I do? I mean, to be honest, uh, Google I.O. is still a good few weeks away, sort of towards the start of May. And even if Google does launch the Pixel 6a there, it may be weeks, months, some time span of some description until it actually hits UK stores. So it kind of depends on how patient you are, how desperate you are for a Google smartphone. The Samsung blows, you know, they offer you know, strong OS and security updates and everything. I would personally just say a big hairy nads to it and grab the A53 or possibly even the A52S because it's still mint. Uh, Mikhail says, are they going to have an A73 by any chance? You bet your left bum cheek they are, Mikhail. Uh, yeah, more funds to cover. Whoop. Jason says, hey, Uncle Spurt, any news on the Xiaomi 12X? Uh, yes, I am hoping to feature it soon, uh, but I am taking a bit of a break after covering the Xiaomi 12 the Xiaomi 12 Pro, the Xiaomi earbuds, the Xiaomi smartwatch. You know, it's kind of like internet porn, you know, really great stuff, top notch. Uh, but, you know, after eight or nine hours of non-stop tentacle-based hentai action, kind of loses its luster a little bit. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I could literally clockwork orange that shit for weeks. Uh, next up, Marcus says, come to Singapore. It's wet and miserable, but at least it's 31 degrees on a good day. Uh, I've actually... Been there, my friends. I even went to good old Sentosa Island and got chased all over the place by a furious peacock who was obviously confused and defended by my ridiculously pale skin. I even had to hide out in a bloody toilet block for about 15 minutes until it finally got bored and f***ed 
fucked off. Got to admit, my memories of Singapore are kind of sporadic. That that obviously sticks out quite uh, quite violently. Uh, but yeah, just got like random memories of being in a karaoke bar singing Queen, I think it was, and checking out some of the uh, the ridiculously cheap electronic shops, eating an awful lot of foods because it was freaking awesome. That's about it. I did I did enjoy the vibe though. I definitely have to go back sometime. Uh, next up, uh, oh, it's Krieger again, uh, who says unsurprisingly, Portland, Jamaica, in the building. Behave, mate. Behave. Although joke's on you, mate, because actually it's been quite a balmy sort of 17, 18 degrees here in the UK. So I've even been out with uh, with just the old t-shirt on, getting the, getting the old guns out. And the local ladies swooning so hard they were dropping their Greg's pasties. Uh, Hajimoto says, you know you made it when spam bots invade your comment section. Annoying as f though. Yeah, tell me about it. And of course, the sweet irony is, of course, immediately a spam bot responded to that comment. Yes, they are still lurking there. No doubt they'll be popping up again in this video, despite all the keywords I've banned and however much I flag them and report them to YouTube. They seem to be doing absolutely bugger all about it, which is incredibly infuriating. Uh, but yeah, if, any, if anyone replies to you down below with my face, uh, but with something else like, oh, Textbird at Telegram and a bunch of numbers, just, just ignore the living shit out of that. Uh, Lex says, it's true that some refurbed Android flagships are infinitely better than the iPhone SE 3, but you've got to remember that some people would rather stay in the Apple ecosystem, and it's a way to easily stay at a fairly cheap price. And some people actually like the SE3's design because it's simple and they might still have the iPhone 8 or whatever. Yeah, definitely some, some very uh, valid points there. Uh, some people would rather just stick with what they know. And yes, at least the SE is a vaguely affordable way of sticking with the Apple ecosystem, as long as you can survive with just 64 gigs of storage, of course. I have got the iPhone SE 2022. I've been testing it out. I'm hoping to get some videos up on it soon once all the Android stuff calms down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, but my main complaint is just that Apple, it just feels like they're phoning it in with the design stuff, at least try and update how this thing bloody looks and feels. You know, like compared to a lot of rivals, it just feels like they're doing the same thing over and over. That would be like me putting out a show every Friday where I just complain about being hungover and crack the exact same your mum joke. Anyway, I can just about squeeze in one more, uh, which is precisely what your mum said last night. RR says, YouTubers that get 1 million subscribers tend to change. What will Uncle Spurt do? Well, let me give you my Uncle Spurt pledge then right now. If I do happen to make a million subscribers uh, before I keel over dead or whatever, then I fully intend to let it massively inflate my ego. Because i got to admit, I'm really looking forward to swaggering about the place with that unbearable smugness that only the biggest YouTubers ever seem to get away with. And I'm assuming like once you hit 1 million YouTube subscribers, then that's it, right? You've beat the game. Life just becomes an absolute piece of piss. Like I'm expecting on day one to receive my Greg's VIP card in the mail, entitling me to free steak bakes for the rest of my natural existence. Which, to be fair, if I'm eating nothing but steak bakes, will probably come to about 18 months tops, if I'm lucky. Uh, but anyways, not get, don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm obviously quite a ways off the uh, the 1 million figure, the magic 1 million. Uh, though, to be honest, I still don't quite understand how I've managed to, to reach the level that we're currently at. The Spurton army is grown scarily big. Absolutely terrifying, I've got to admit, at times. So massive heartfelt thanks to everyone who has pork subscribe and dinged that notifications bell, of course, all the usual YouTube shenanigans. And thank you to everyone who commented last week. Uh, apologies if I didn't get around to your comment, but I'm now once again massively out of time. Lots of fun to crack on with. So uh, let's just have a quick look at next week and guess what's happening next week? More phone launches, hooray. There's going to be a Xiaomi launch on Tuesday, going to be a OnePlus launch on Thursday. I've got the Motorola Moto G22 and the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G coming in as well, so lots of stuff to cover. So yeah, next week is going to be bigger than Totoro's schlong. And of course, assuming that you are groggy enough to not actually remember anything what I just said, hopefully you'll join me next Friday at noon again for another one of these things. Uh, and in the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves, drink lots of delicious beer, have a good time, and see you later. Love you!